Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. DC Comics started releasing these little rivals, which is a two-player version of their gaming system. This one happens to be Batman versus Joker, which is going to be one that a lot of people are going to like. A lot of people know who Batman is. A lot of people know the Joker and their relationship. This is going to appeal to a lot of people. What you're going to get in this box is... Um, You're going to get a two-player matchup. I was checking to see if you had to have the original game, but I don't think you have to have the original game. I think everything you need comes in this box. If you want to play a two-player experience of uh, DC Comics, this will do it. There's some different things. The main difference is that you're going to get three of those oversized cards with different hit points on them. And when you get through the first one, the player will score victory points, and you get a little bit of a stronger one. So as you lose health, you get stronger. I know it's kind of counterintuitive, really, but it really helps the game out. You get a different power, and your health goes up. And then if you can beat them three times, you get um, more victory points. That's how you have to do this. You can't do it where you get weaker because then it's just a runaway once you do that. So it gets harder to beat them. Their power gets stronger, but you're scoring victory points, and victory points is how you win. The new mechanic is going to be the confrontation. That's where I can directly forego buying cars as you do a normal DC. And I can forego and just attack you, which there are cars that will allow you to defend. And that give and take is really where this game comes in. All the cards are themed and thematically between Batman and Joker. It's still weird that Joker can use Batman's utility belt and Batmobile and Bat Signal and stuff like that. So it's still DC Comics. It's not going to win you over if you don't like the other one. Although this might be kind of a better experience. I do like the confrontation and a little bit of a push and pull there you have with it of whether I should go ahead and attack you now. So I can score victory points by doing regular DC comic stuff. And if I beat you, I have a chance of just defeating you outright. I like this version. I, I'm not a huge fan of the DC Comics game system. It's okay. Um, I keep it around uh, star people on deck building. But I do like the little two-player variant here where I can get it really quickly in a box, have what I need, and... The Batman vs. Joker thing really comes alive to me, even though there's some wonky, agreeable that there's some wonky um, thematic things going on, but fairly good. So here are the components for deck building game rivals Batman vs. Joker from Cryptozoic. This is in the DC deck building genre. What you're going to get in the components is a rule book. With the same art on the front. It'll teach you how to play the game. It's not the best rule book in the world. And it kind of tells you the differences between Batman. This version. Which there's a couple things that are just a little bit different. And you can jump right to that section and start playing. Mostly the difference is going to be the confronting your opponents. This is a good section if you're just kind of watching this to go over. And I'll explain that in detail. You're going to get a number of cards here. And you're going to get three for the Joker. You see that the goes up, and three for Batman. And you're going to get a number of cards that match the original. Some villains, it's going to work a little bit differently, I'll show you. But all the cards are going to be centered around Batman and the Joker fighting each other. Natalie's here. I've never been crazy about the rule books for the DC Comics. Um, they kind of keep them systematically the same. Um, 
I kind of wish there was just a section. Like, okay, you've played DC Comics, go here. This is what's different. I kind of wish that was in there. They get wordy at times, but listen, they're really written for somebody who hasn't played games before. So if you've played games before, this shouldn't be a problem for you to, to figure out. And it's not a game you're going to take too seriously, so there's a rule violation. You just kind of roll with it. It's not going to be a huge deal. Rule book probably will take you, if you play games before, maybe 10 to 12 minutes. If you've never played DC Comics or deck building before, you might want 30 minutes to do it. Uh, you can definitely play with um, somebody who hasn't played DC Comics. You can pick this up and play it right away. So the rule book, you know, I give it a pass. Good. Okay, so the important difference from DC Comics is going to be these cards. So one person is going to play as the Joker, and one person will play as the Batman. What's going to happen is, is you're going to have a power. At the end of your turn, draw an extra card if you bought or gained one non-kick superpower. And you have nine health. So when somebody is able to attack you, or Batman is able to attack you with nine health, this will go out and you have this power. Once during his turn, if you play a villain superpower, you'll the top card of your main deck, play it, and return it. And then when he's beat at 12, during a confrontation, plus one power for each villain superpower. And when you get beat by 15, you would automatically lose. And these are worth a certain number of victory points. So when you are the Joker and you beat Batman, you get this. This is now worth four victory points, nine, and then an automatic win. So one way of things that you're trying to do is you are trying to defeat either Batman or Joker the way that you're playing it. Now, this is going to come with a deck of cards. You're going to have new punch cards that will come with it. And you will have new vulnerability. New weaknesses, which play exactly like the old one. just has different art on it, Batman. And you're going to have kicks, uh, which work exactly the same as the base game, just different artwork. The only reason why you wouldn't want to use the originals would be because this artwork makes more sense that you're playing Batman. So you guys split these up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, you, put, you split these up and you split the vulnerabilities up. So everybody gets an equal number. And then the game is going to play the same where you're going to have uh, a number of cards face up that you will be able to fight or purchase. Now, if you look, there's only one currency in comics or DC comics, which is power. Your power is used to purchase things. You can see your starter is one power each, and you're going to use that to purchase these cards that will be faced up. So let me show you how this works. And I'm just gonna show you with a couple here. And these cards will be available for both sides to purchase. So what you would do, let's say you have something like this, and you have a hand of five. So what you would do is you would spend a three power. These have no effects of vulnerability three power that I would have to spend, and I could buy anything with the power down here. So let's say and I wanted to find a card that I could actually purchase. With two, I would get put this in my discard pile, plus one during a confrontation that foe discards a card from his hand. The cards that I used, whether I could buy something with them or not, goes in my discard, and then I draw five new cards. My opposing player would then go, he would do his thing, buy a card, Maybe he would buy a card and a new card would come out. And then I would do my next turn. So let's say I had five power. Then I could, you, know, you might have villains. So this one has six, pretend like I had six. If you get a villain in this one, um, it goes into your deck, do your discard pile, and you don't get in your hand till you're out of uh, your, there's no more cards that can be drawn. You take your discard pile, you shuffle it up, and then you draw the five cards. Now you have your new hand, preferably with something good. Now you can attack with him, and each phone gains a weakness when he comes out. But during a confrontation, plus two power for each weakness in that foe's discard pile. So you want to attack and get um, weaknesses if you had that card. Now, what's going to be different about this one 
as opposed to regular DC Comics is the idea of this Batman vs. Joker. It's a two-player only game and you have these multiple cards. In the original one, you just have one. You're playing competitively with multiple people, but it doesn't really feel like a battle. Now, in this one, instead of buying cards, you can confront your enemy and then try to knock them out for their points. And there are cards, as you can see, that will have certain powers during a confrontation. So you want to kind of utilize those power. If you had this guy, you get plus three power, but during a confrontation, you may gain a hero or villain for the destroyed pile and put it in your hand. That's what Razan Ghoul does. So a little bit different that you can attack. Now, there may be cards that allow your opponent to fight back, so you might have the, let's say, nine that's required, but he has something that takes two away, so you only have seven. So you never really know for sure whether you're able to confrontation, you'll be able to take them out or not. Uh, the game will end when the deck is depleted. That's another way the game would end. At that point, you will just add up your victory points. Now, for those who haven't played DC at all, each of the cards are going to have a victory point listed on it down here on the bottom left, or most of them do anyway. So you come across villains, locations, they go in your discard pile, but when they come up, they stay in front of you for the rest of the game. When you play this card, leave it in front of you for the rest of the game. Ongoing, add one to your character's cost. And then you have superpowers that can be unveiled. Here's insanity, equipment, a utility belt. And this will be important because sometimes cards will give you a power like, if you see any equipment cards, you get those for free. You have other heroes join you. Here's Nightwing that can come up. A superpower of a maniacal laugh. The bat signal. Now the Joker can go get the bat signal too. You know, and and the Batman could have the superpower killing joke. Um, so that bothers some people thematically. World's greatest detective. There's Poison Ivy. Talia Al Ghul. There's a Red Robin plus four power. And this rivals one tells you which set is in. So if you ever mix and match, you want Alfred Pennyworth to be in another set, you could easily get rid of those. The master martial artist, Robin, uh, Wayne Manor, Hugo Strange, Utility Belt. You're going to see some of these are going to repeat the billionaire, the clapping hole, Two Face, Batarang, Batarang, Batmobile. So a lot of stuff in here. But the game is really simple. You're going to draw five cards. You're going to look and see how much power you have. You can either try to conf conf uh, confront, they call it confrontation, and go after your enemy or buy cards in the middle. At the end of the round, you put new cards out, and that's how it's worked. This system has been used, utilized over and over and over with a lot of different themes, but this one's a little bit cool because of the two-player confrontation that's going on. Who should buy this game? If you're a fan of the DC Comics, this is great. This is your two-player box. If somebody wanted to primarily use a two-player game and didn't want to invest in the big box or really as a Batman or Joker fan or likes that dynamic that they have, then I would say go with this version. Um, you know, If you're going to be playing with multiple people, you're going to want to go with one of the other sets. I think the original set's probably thematically... I, mean, I know those characters the best, Superman or whatever. I think the other one's... You know, there's an evil deck, and then some one with like secondary characters. I don't know. Um, but I think most people are going to like the Batman and Joker battle. It's going to make sense, and it's really fun. And I like some of the cards that are in there. All the bad guys are in there too. So you have the villains like Poison Ivy and Two Face. They're all in here. Um, Joker is just the bad guy that you're actually one of the one of the two people playing will be playing as him. So. And I think non-gamers are going to be able to pick this up and play it. This could easily be sold, you know, at Target or whatever. And people will say, like, wow, this is cool. Let's play that. So I'm going to give this one a keeper. I'm, it's going to have a place for me. I like the Batman vs. Joker. When my son gets older, we'll, we'll probably play this a lot when he starts doing the deck building game stuff. So it's going to be a cool one to stick around. So I'm going to recommend it, but it's just more DC. And if you didn't like DC, you're, you're not going to like this, I don't think.